Hello there, people of the internet. It's your boy. You will, you will pay, pay for your, your insolence, insolence here. And today, I'll be doing what is probably uh, considered to be a godsend for many players at the moment who are getting into the Bionis interior. And that will be teaching you how to fight Lurithia. Now, despite what you may hear, she has actually been nerfed very slightly compared to the original game. It's not anything significant, and it probably will still lead to people having issues with this boss fight regardless, but the thing they changed is that her arena is now significantly larger, which means that your party will no longer have to worry about stepping into the ether pool or getting toppled into it. And if I recall, I think her team topple move used to also do blowback, and now it doesn't. But I um, I have to test that. I don't remember if it did or not. Despite this, uh, I've heard that she's still difficult for many people. And I think there are effective means of actually defeating her. So today I hope to highlight some of those effective means for you. Now, with this, it's a fairly simple team setup. Um, I'm going to be scumming my way through this, <laughs> essentially, and I'm going to be using Fiora, Dunban, and Ryan, all in a party. Why am I using these three characters? Well, I'm using Fiora uh, as the primary damage dealer because she does insane amounts of ether damage if Spectrite, and Lorithia not only summons Nebulas that pretty much only take ether damage, but she also is resistant to physical damage herself, so it's best to use ether abilities on her. Fiora also has an instant topple uh, move called Final Cross. This will be very effective in the tactic that we're going to be doing. So, essentially what I have here is uh, a pretty basic kind of uh, Fiora build. Um, I think speed frames are really good though she if you hit her physically she does give you agility down um it really won't matter though because you just want to focus on early in the fight having some of her attacks miss you that way you can build up tension and start doing final cross early which is why i have this tension swing four gem equipped purely so that it's easier to build tension in the fight and you don't have to worry about you know uh not being able to even use final cross topple up here to deal more damage to enemies that you topple because you'll be trying to keep Lorithia on the ground for as much as possible. We're going to be topple locking her. <laughs> That's essentially how the fight's going to go. Though I don't know if you can fully topple lock her because she does recover very quickly from topples. With Dunban, again, very simple. You want to have aggro up. You want to have haste to the Machna Blade. You can buy, I believe, in Makana's Field. Uh, this one specifically, it's really good. It's probably his best weapon, regardless of, you know, what weapons you get on him. Purely because it gives him aggro up and haste, which anything that gets uh, Dunban closer to Blossom Dance is better. I have agility up to increase his agility as much as possible, since the max amount you can get up to is 50. I think 44 is fair. And I also have two topple resist 5 gems, because we want Dunban to be staying up as much as possible so he can revive everyone which means we want to have him avoid being toppled by uh, Lorithia's instant topple move at all costs. Uh, Ryan. Now, Ryan will be our main toppler. We're going to want him to do wild down on her once we break. So we have topple plus here, which will increase the duration of the time that she is toppled. Just helps us. That way she stays on the ground longer and we have more time to just whack her in the face. Again, topple resist gems, purely because we, we don't want our teammates to fall, I should say, and get toppled by her in the beginning of the fight. And an Aether Protect 5, because he's going to be tanking the most Aether damage from all of those nebulas. It's very important that you keep that on him too, keep him tanky enough to deal with all the Aether damage. Uh, next, we'll go into skill trees. I like Courage on Fiora. Having increased critical hit rate is good. Increased agility on Dunban is always good. And increased agility on Ryan is good as well. But it's, I purely actually keep it up for the um, increased attack power 
and max HP increase at the bottom here. Just so Ryan is fully tanky. Next, uh, skill links. So skill links, I think the only real important skill links for Fiora is anything that raises her battle affinity. So this with Dunban here, this with uh, Shulk here. And that's essentially it. There's really not too much you could you could do that I think would help a lot because you know reducing the weight of equipment's cool, but she's gonna be lowering your agility regardless. And um, maybe healing the party after a chain attack in case you know you need to be healed more, and your team is kind of doing low and uh, is really low on health. Similar with Dunban, um, anything that increases agility. Uh, things that increase chain attack damage, stuff like that. Very, very useful. And with Ryan, it's best to just equip things that can increase chain attack damage and increase agility and aggro. Um, he's going to be tanking, so you just want to keep him tanking. Now, in terms of arts, in terms of arts, what we want to do is equip Fiora with air fang because it will you know cause break on her you want to be able to do break topple combos and then the rest is all pretty much uh ether damage abilities uh, mag storm it's not really super good but if you don't kill any of the nebulas that she spawns with uh ether drain into zero gravity then mag storm is a good way to finish them off because they'll be following you around the fight the entire time uh cross impact is really really good for keeping her on the ground for a couple extra seconds for days and final cross is going to be like one it's going to be our main damage dealer and two it's going to be the main way that we keep her on the ground for the uh, extended period of time that we do this cooldown is extremely long so you want to do it in a chain attack and then do it outside of a chain attack to deal the most amount of damage and then speed shift will help purely because it gives us haste which will help us increase our talent gauge uh, a little more with Dunban, uh, the main thing you just want to worry about Dunban is making sure he can draw aggro. So I have Battle Eye and uh, Blinding Blossom on. And we also want to make sure he can topple, so Seal Strike is there as well. I have some Aether damage abilities with Temptus Kick and Thunder. That way he can, you know, at least help in the fight with the Nebula. And deal a little more damage to Lorithea that we uh, want him to do. But the rest is all toss-up for you. Soaring Temptus is okay, but it doesn't really deal a ton of damage. So, I mean, it's, it's only really useful for increasing his talent gauge and maybe the party gauge. Ryan is mostly just going to be standing there, <laughs> so uh, we want him to just do defensive arts, stuff like Anchor Chain and stuff like Aura Burst. Uh, he want, you want him to engage the enemy, you want him to draw the aggro. Uh, Last Stand is kind of paramount because if he dies, then we want him to get himself right back up immediately after. Same again, you want Wild Down and Shield Bash so that he can pretty much just be in the fight uh, toppling Lurithia and also dazing her so we keep her on the ground. Uh, with that said, I'll show you how we can do this. I promise I can. Though I say this now and she's probably just going to do something that's going to whoop my ass in this fight. <laughs> in any case, let's go. Oh, also, I should also mention too, you want to go into this fight with pretty much a full party gauge and uh, with uh, and with Fiora's talent art full. The best way to do this, there is a cellula at the very end of the path where you walk up to the heart. And that thing, uh, what you want to do is have Ricky be your main party member, start battle, do the B button battle affinity prompt, and then use happy happy, and then exit the fight and do it over and over again. I'll probably show you on the screen how it's done. That way you can get your party gauge fill to the max before you enter the fight then once you're done with that just go up to that enemy and just keep hitting it with Fiora's auto attack to fill up her talent gauge so you can start the fight as prepared as possible because she will be throwing no punches at the very beginning she'll straight up just be doing her strongest moves right at the start which uh, you want to be very much prepared for so again let's get into the fight okay so uh lo and behold I was starting off the fight, and I made one stupid decision, and I died. <laughs> so, we're actually going to do it this time, I promise. This is a very effective means of beating her. Though it's, it is very ironic that, you know, this boss that I've had trouble with for years 
is finally uh, throwing it at me all again. Okay. So she's going to spawn the Nebulas first. We're going to hit it with the Ether Cannon move. It's going to be a ton of damage to them. From there, we're going to Ether Drain it. And then do this Paralysis move. Oh, it didn't really hit them more. Oh, shit. Hit an Arc Seal. Okay, alright. We dealed with the babies. Now she's mad at Fiora, I don't really understand why. Alright. Okay, she's on the ground. This is good. Okay, okay, alright. We got Final Cross. Come on, we can do it. There we go. Okay. Alright, we got this. We got this. So, Air Fang. Seal Strike. Wild Down. Pass it to Fiora. Nice. Final Cross. This should do a ton of damage. Oh, my beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Ether Drainer, and she's dead. Beautiful fight. Beautiful fight. This is exactly how I anticipated it would go the first time. <laughs> um, okay, this is this is spoilers. Um, this is pretty good to do it for you guys who beat the fight. But uh, yeah, so this is the effect, the most effective means of beating Larithia. Very simple. All you want to do is topple locker. Uh, just remember to deal with her babies first, and then the later parts of the fight should become significantly easier. Uh, yeah, uh, there are other methods too. I'm gonna test them out probably on my live stream. The big thing with her is that she will deal. She will take a lot of damage unless you use ether user damage, uh, which is why I actually think Fiora, Melia, and Ricky would be a really good party for this fight. But uh, that's neither here nor there. I'll try that fight probably on stream when I do this fight uh, live then. But in any case, I hope I helped you in any way figure out how to beat this absolute menace of a boss fight. Uh, <laughs> Definitive Edition fix it a bit. You no longer get dropped on Aether Pool, which no longer makes the fight extremely unpredictable. But it's still pretty annoying, and those of you who've just kind of maybe been uh, mashing buttons your way through the game will still probably be very confused. So hopefully this helps you. Uh, if it did, please let me know. Please drop a like on the video. Helps me figure out if you like this type of content. If there's any other, if there are any other boss fights that you guys have had issues with, please let me know. I'll try to do maybe a tutorial guide on those as well. In any case, thank you for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Okay. Ooh, Ryan. What happened to Ryan? He wasn't able to chain attack there. Of course, I, I I do this like three times, and then literally out of nowhere, she just whoops my ass. <laughs> okay, I think I know what I did wrong. <laughs>